So, um, without further ado, Wonder, uh, you were telling us uh, that you had garnered an award once for your um, for your efforts as a volunteer firefighter. And I was I was hoping you would regale us with that. Tale. Oh man, it was it was a. Uh... It was a technical rescue, and uh, it's been enough years that uh, I'm a little murky. And the, the crazy thing was, I didn't even know that that there was anything. You know, it was just it's just part of the job. It was just like another day in volunteering, and I got to do so many different things. Everything from this particular event, which was responding to a technical rescue, uh, and so I was helping with the rope system, and we had you know, everyone going down this very, very steep cliff where there was a river at the bottom and some people had fallen uh, and needed quite a lot of, of assistance to come back up. And so the volunteers have a yearly kind of like a gala at the end of the year. And I was incredibly surprised to, at this gala. It's all, you know, everyone's dressing up. And it's so funny to see people in like these beautiful formal clothes when we've been like so dirty and scrappy and <laughs> and and I was very surprised that they gave us all like um it was basically a, a really beautiful uh, certificate that uh, that was just acknowledging that that was it was a really unusual uh, thing that we were asked to do you know because we did a lot of you know it was I was at fires I was at car accidents um, you know it, you, those are pretty normal. But this one was very unusual and required a huge team. So not only people with technical skills, but then the EMTs. And um, it was a massive multi-person effort. And it, it's, I mean, it was, it was amazing to be part of, to be helping and being able to be a help in that situation. But something that I never even, I mean, I, when, when I was there in the middle of it, I definitely wasn't thinking anything about like, oh, this is an unusual part of the job or you know, that it was ever going to be a thing that came up like at the end of the year. But it was really special. And everyone was okay. That's the best part of the story, <laughs> that everyone was all right. <laughs> well, and that's, and that's kind of like the point of the, of the, of the, of the critical responders and, and why, why people like uh, become first responders in the first place is so that they can contribute, you know, and um, help people, right? Like just that's, that's, that's yeah. the thing. Uh, so anyway, it, I th I thought it was I thought it would be an awesome story, and uh, it truly is. Like I don't I hate heights anyway, so I don't, I couldn't imagine like how like going down and handling all those ropes. I can't rock climbing. Yeah, and I wasn't the the most by far the was probably one of, one of the least technical side, but you know they just acknowledged everyone involved, and I remember that I was pretty much at the top of the cliff the whole time, just constantly adjusting ropes for the people on the bottom, you know, belaying or making them tighter, or, you know, making sure they were secured and, and honestly just being in a set of hands. So sometimes you did more, sometimes you did less, you know, you, sometimes there was a call where we would respond to, um, there was a girl jumping on a trampoline, young girl, and, and she had rolled her ankle and we were, there to assess do we think it's broken you know what should we do next and and then there was other times that um there was a fire that i went to um and it was a chimney fire and i had been doing other things i've been carrying you know five gallon buckets of smoldering insulation out into the snow it was the middle of winter you know when chimney fires are most likely to happen and i had also been uh, like tarping up these little kids rooms with plastic to keep you know all the debris off their cute little beds and stuffed animals and and i'm doing all this and it's probably like two in the morning you know almost the vast majority of my calls came in the middle of the night um, i had a pager and i remember that i think he was the lead the captain who was the lead on that who was who is a professional full-time firefighter then in the area that we lived was really uh, relied on a huge network of volunteers, of which I was one. And I lived at the end of the road that the fire station was on. So I was usually one of the first two volunteers to show up and the professionals would have already gone. And then we would kind of assess, okay, they took this rig, which rig should we take? Let's take an engine, let's take a water tender. You know, what do we need to do? And I remember getting up there and the captain was like, hey, 
you're narrow. Can you get into this chimney chase? And I could, I fit right in like this. <laughs> they were much, you know, much bigger. And we're trying to like chop out the insulation with this, you know, not getting in a lot of leverage or room, but because I was little, they literally just like pushed me right into the chimney chase and gave me an ax. And they're like, get all this burning insulation out. I was like, you got it. I am Zena. Nice. <laughs> uh, let, let's be absolutely clear. Uh, Wonder never stopped putting out fires. She just stopped doing it for the fire department. Now she's doing it here. <laughs> marketing, you know, directing, skills directing skills our marketing is, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have always considered myself pretty good at a crisis. <laughs> Can be really calm and assess the situation and make recommendations. Um, and I know that there's, that's a huge part of, you know, the training that we got because either the, they deliberately put you in, you know, to teach you in high stress situations, how to, you know, how to make the best decision that you can with the information that you have right there. It's not just, you know, how to open a hydrant and, you know, how, you know, what to check, you know, your ABCs of, you know, when you're checking a patient with EMT training, but, um, it's also okay. How do you how do you communicate well with people and quickly? And who? What's the chain of command? And how do you you know make the best decision when you're just over a radio or people are stressed and and you know potentially people's lives are in jeopardy? So yeah, it was a very I loved it. I did that for a couple years and and I loved it. It was very fun. And um, one of the one of the uh, one of the major fires that Wonder has helped us put out was making sure all of these, the turndown totes got the right name. So uh, anyway, so thank you for that wonder. And, you know, thank you again for being on the stream and so happy to have you here.